Howdy folks, it's Angel the Hunting Gear Guy. I was recently playing around with uh, my dad's, grandpa's uh, 3030, and uh, I was looking at some of the ammo that he had. He had some 150 and 170 grain bullets. I was kind of wondering which would be best for, for, for me it would be for deer, uh, but uh, maybe some other people out there would be hunting other things. So I thought about uh, looking at some of the different research on it, taking a look at some of the ballistics, and I thought that would, I would kind of share that with you today. So first thing we'll talk about is price. Um, they're the same, 150, 170. Uh, the bullet weights are, they're not that different. Like if you look at 308, for example, you can get uh, 147 grain bullets, you can get 165, 168, uh, 180 grain. You can get a 200 grain, you can get a 220 grain bullet if you really want to. There's a lot of range in that. Whereas with 3030, like a 150 to a 170, pretty close. Pretty close for uh, for bullet weights, pretty close for performance. So this is really gonna be like, I don't know, slicing uh, hairs if you're cutting hairs, cutting teeth, cut it, I don't know. It's gonna be, it's gonna be close anyways. If you want my opinion first, so you don't have to watch the rest of the video, I think 150 grain bullets are going to be better for deer. I think 170 are going to be better for mm, close in like elk moose. Okay, uh, now let me get to the why. Uh, 150 grain bullets uh, produce more energy at the muzzle, more a lot more velocity at the muzzle, drop less, and have more impact speed. So I think that those are all import, important for deer. Uh, for elk and moose, 170 will give just a little bit more penetration, uh, so that's going to be better for them. That's that's the long and short of it. Uh, now, 150 grain bullets, they're going to be coming out of the barrel at around 2,400 feet per second, uh, whereas 170s will be going around 2,200 feet per second. That doesn't sound like a lot, like 2,200 feet per second, but uh, they're slow pokes. Both of them are slow pokes, so 2,400 at least is something. Now. On most of these bullets, what you're going to find is that the uh, the profile of the bullet is uh, is pretty flat. They're uh, they're pretty flat on the top, and uh, that's so that when you put them in the magazine, they don't kaboom each other because they're nice and flat. They're distributing the area. They're not going to light off the primer in front of them if the, the gun gets bumped or fires or whatever. Uh, but that's not very ballistically like smooth, right? We want like pointy bullets so that they fly through the air nice and fast and they keep their velocity. These things do not hold their velocity very well. So uh, they lose a lot of that speed, a lot of that energy uh, very quickly. And uh, I'll show you some ballistics charts here as well. So uh, that 150 grain bullet, it's going to drop uh, a little bit less. If you sight them both in at 100 yards, the 150 grain is going to drop 7.2 inches. Whereas the 170 grain, zero to gain for 100 yards, is going to drop 8.4 inches. So a little bit more for the 170. Not like a, a, a really super noticeable amount, but a little bit. And I think like, like 200 is going to be like maximum distance we're going to be firing with these things anyways. At close range, I think both of these things are going to do just fine. But that's true of every center fire cartridges, the cartridge that you'd want to use for hunting. They all work at close range. So we're going to talk about that mid and uh, like 100, 100 meters to uh, 200 meters or yards, whatever, the same thing. Now I mentioned at the start, the energy at the muzzle is more for the 150 grain. It's got about 1900 foot pounds, whereas the 170 grain is going to have around 1820, somewhere around there, depending on which loading you use and that kind of thing. Uh, now, <clears throat> yeah, a close range shot, that 150 grain is going to be doing more damage because it's faster. Uh, that 150 grain bullet's lighter. It may not penetrate as, as hard as the 170 because it is going to be going so fast. But um, for deer and for anything that's like, you know, yay wide, uh, that's fine. The the 150 is still going to punch through the other side. It's still going to have enough energy to punch through the other side. And it's also going to do a bunch of damage on the inside. Now, when you take that out to, let's say, 100 yards, it's going to be a little bit closer. At 100 yards, they're pr they're basically the same. 150 and 170. They're they have the same energy. At 200 yards, now that bigger, heavier uh, bullet on the 170 uh, is carrying energy a little bit better. It's going to have 990 versus 950 foot pounds of energy on the 150 grain. So, at 200, the 170 grain is uh, superior. But again, you got more a little bit more drop, and both of these have dropped below that like 1,000 foot pounds of energy on the deer. It's not going to matter if you hit it in the heart lungs, but it is like not really optimal in terms of the amount of energy you're putting in. If you punch a shoulder or, or hit something on the way in, it might redirect that bullet. It might not have enough oomph to really do a lot of damage, and that's really the concern there. So um, at close range, the 150 is better. At long range, the 170 is better. Kind of a tie on this one, to be honest. 
The third thing I wanted to talk about was uh, impact velocity. It's kind of weird to talk about this, but like bullets have a minimum amount of velocity before they work. Um, luckily for these bullets, most of these are flat point uh, soft nose, which doesn't need a lot of energy before it starts working. Uh, that flat point uh, really quickly uh, expands. Um, and uh, even if it doesn't expand, a flat point is pretty good at doing damage all on its own. Um, now, in terms of impact, uh, we'll talk about the velocity at some of these different distances. At the muzzle, yeah, the 150 is going 200 feet FPS faster. At 100 yards, the 150 is still going faster. Now it's going 2020 20, uh, FPS versus like 1895, let's say on the 170. So a little bit, still a little bit faster, still, still has like a 100 FPS or so. So again, it's going to expand a little bit more reliably. Uh, at 200, uh, that, 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 uh, amount has shrunk a little bit more. Now the 150 will be at 1685 uh, versus 1620 on the 170. So we still have, uh, you know, 50, 60 FPS uh, with the more with the 150 versus the 170. So you're going to get more reliable expansion uh, with that 150 at longer distances because it's got that uh, at more, more speed. That being said, Less expansion on the 170 is actually going to help it penetrate more. So that's why for like an elk or moose or something like that, even if it doesn't expand really well, it's still going to penetrate better. So it might be a better choice for one of those. Whereas on a deer, uh, I think I'd rather have the expansion in the boiler room where the, you know, heart and lungs are on the, uh, uh, on the uh, animal. So I mentioned penetration there. Yeah, with the 170, it's going to be more. Any Anytime you use a heavier, slower bullet, it will penetrate more. It will typically expand less. Like if you if you throw, let's just take this to the extreme. If you if I loaded uh, this 3030 up with a 220 grain bullet uh, and fired that at, you know, pedestrian speeds, it's going to bleh, just kind of poke its way through. Uh, it's going to get great penetration. Now let's see, I loaded up with a 50 grain bullet at, you know, mocked uh, three or whatever. And I throw that at a deer that thing is going to probably fragment, probably cause a lot of damage, but a shallow uh, damage. So the ideal is somewhere in the middle there. Uh, the 170 is going to give better penetration for elk and moose. The 150 is going to give better damage in the boiler room for uh, for deer. And that's really where I'd sum this up is the, the 150 looks better for the deer. Uh, now, keep in mind, one, uh, these are so super close that you should be really uh, trying uh, each in your rifle and seeing which one's more accurate. Because if one's drastically more accurate than the other one, who cares about these minor differences between these two? Use the one that's more accurate uh, and uh, and just go ahead with that. Um, and the other thing to mention is that I'm just talking about like traditional cup and core bullets here. What if we cheat a little bit? Now, one of the options you might wanna look at is the Hornady Lever Revolution. Uh, it uses different powders that's gonna give higher speeds and it uses a bullet that has a flex tip on it, little rubber tip on it. That allows us to get a sleeker profile on the bullet. So it's gonna have better ballistic coefficient. That bullet's gonna be more slippery in the wind. It's gonna fly further without losing so much speed. Uh, and it just brings more power and more speed way further out. They have a, a 140 and a 160 grain bullets. Uh, and for the 160, uh, it's got much better ballistic coefficient. At the muzzle, it's also doing 2400 uh, FPS. So it's giving you the, the velocity of that 150, so a little bit faster. Uh, it's going to do it delivering 2050 foot pounds from the muzzle, so more. Uh, at 100 yards, it's still got 2000 FPS and 1600 foot pounds. And at 200 yards, it's got 1900 FPS. 1300 foot pounds and only 6.1 inches of drop that compares with the 150 uh at 7.2 inches and the 170 at 8.4 so it's it's a practical reduction in the amount of drop it's going to have at 200 uh it's more expensive it's like 10 or 20 bucks more expensive per box but how many rounds do you need to shoot at a deer anyways Seven, because that's what it fits in the tube. <laughs> well, I mean, realistically, you should just be firing one, maybe two, if you've, you know, if, if you've wounded the deer and it's time to, to dispatch it. But uh, um, if the Hornady Lever Revolution runs well in your rifle and it's accurate, um, I'd use that just because it's got all, all the ballistic advantages and none of the disadvantages because it's got that flexible rubber tip. So try it out, um, if anything. Um, hopefully this has been enjoyable and informative. Thanks for watching.